This week on Conversion Cast, we're bringing you a fun and different and special episode where our very own Bob the Teacher sat down with the one and only Amy Porterfield from amyporterfield.com. Amy is sort of a friend of the family here and an expert at teaching people how to start and grow their businesses using Facebook, online courses, webinars, and a whole lot more. Uh, In this 20-minute conversation between Bob and Amy, you're going to get to see and hear Amy's expertise in action. So stay tuned and let's dive right in. Hey, Amy, thanks so much for joining us on this edition of Conversion Cast. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Well, I know that you're a big fan of lead pages as we're a big fan of you and you've been one of our top partners for a long time and you've also been someone that we share uh, our audience to get to know about Facebook, online courses, webinars, uh, basically how to scale a business, how to grow a business. And I'm really glad that you're going to be sharing a very specific launch strategy with us today. Uh, Before we get into that, though, I know that we have some earlier stage Facebook Live users and I just want to get a couple of their initial questions out of the way. Okay, so number one, okay. um, what kinds of Facebook Live tools are you using right now to actually broadcast? There's all kinds of things out there like Be Live and Wirecast and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What are you using that you've been testing out and really happy with so far? So I absolutely love Wirecast. I think it's one of the best tools you can use. And if you're thinking about doing a consistent show where you're showing up weekly or a few times a month, I think it's important that you use a software that's going to make you look fantastic as well as really work for your audience. And Wirecast allows you to do the lower thirds. It allows you to show your screen. It doesn't have to, um, it doesn't cut out all the time like some of the other tools do. So I feel like it's great. I mean, it's not free and you do have to do, you have to invest a little, but in the long run, I feel like it allows me to go pro and I'm not a really big techie girl. So if I could figure it out, I feel like anybody could. Yeah, that's awesome. Great advice. Uh, My second quick question is, you have a a really great setup here. You're well lit. You've got a cool background and all that stuff. For Facebook Lives to be really solid, it seems like people need to get three things right. They need to get their audio right. They need to get their video right. uh, And they need to make sure that, you know, they're in in really great shape. Um, There's one other thing I was asking for. Oh, your camera, your audio, and your lighting. So what are the tools that you're recommending in those three categories? So right now I just have a diva ring lighting me and I also have a window right here and I feel like anytime you can get in front of a window, the natural light's always going to make you look better and it's easier. Yeah. So if, if that's what you can do, go for it. But right now I can't necessarily be right in front of that window. So I also have a diva ring. It's like a ring light lighting me up. And also with the mic, I mean, quite honestly, I'm just using the speakers of my <laughs> MacBook Pro right now. But typically, I love a Yeti mic. I think Yeti mics are fantastic. You mean one of these? Yes. It's so good (laughs) and so easy. And it's inexpensive. It's an Amazon purchase that you could have at your house tomorrow. So exactly. Fantastic. Yeah, they are actually uh, typically even on sale for under $100 uh, relatively frequently. So uh, really great tool uh, for that. Very cool. So now that we got those beginning questions out of the way, I want to dive into your launch program that you've uh, kind of been finessing. And I know you're still testing and tweaking it to always make it better. Um, But for people who are experienced with Facebook Live and those that are wanting to get results faster, let's talk about this idea of how you're using Facebook Live in a creative way to launch a program. Uh, You talked to me a little bit about it beforehand, but I really want to dig into some details. So on a, on a high level, what would you say, uh, kind of the 30 second version, and then we'll explore further, uh, what's going on with this particular strategy. Okay. So 30 second version would be that you can use Facebook live to pre-launch before you're ready to do your webinar or a challenge or a three part video series or whatever that might be. So what I'm going to break down with you together, we'll do this is how to use Facebook Live over a certain period of time in order to engage your audience, get them active before you're ready to promote anything. And the content you do on your Facebook Live is totally aligned with the launch of whatever program you're going to sell. So it's basically a pre-launch strategy. Awesome. And it also involves a little bit of advertising, a little bit of you know social yeah. engagement. And this is what I think is the clever part is like putting those things together. Uh, and I don't see many people trying to do this just yet. And I know you're always testing these uh, things out and sharing them with other people. So uh, let's talk about this now. 
when are you starting to do Facebook Lives in order to start drumming up the energy for your launch? I suggest you do it four weeks before you're ready to start whatever promo you're going to do. So let's just pretend you're going to do uh, webinars to promote an online training program. So I say four weeks before that, you are starting to do a weekly Facebook Live. Weekly Facebook, four weeks in advance. Awesome. Now, some people might only have five people or 10 people on their Facebook Live, and many of those people might even share their last name. Uh, what are you encouraging people to do to get that initial momentum going so that they go ahead and, and maintain that momentum through the rest of this process? Okay, so to I really like to plan things out. So what I want you to do is I want you to sit down before you get going, and I want you to think about four different topics you could talk about all totally aligned with whatever it is you're going to eventually sell. So I want you to think about four topics that you can teach on a Facebook Live, and we'll break down the formula of how to do it on the live in a moment. But once you get these four topics figured out, then I want you to think about, okay, put on a calendar the first one you're going to do, and I want you to do four leading up to your promo, and I want you to do them on the same day in the same time. So once you choose the date and time, put it on your calendar. Tony Robbins says if it's not on your calendar, if you don't schedule it, it's not real, and I agree. So put it on your calendar, tell your team you're going to do it, commit to it, and stay true to your word. And from there, now I want you to think about ways that you might be able to promote that first Facebook Live. If you don't have a lot of people on your Facebook page, maybe you could talk about it in a group. Maybe you could get on somebody's podcast and say you're going to start this four-week series of this free, great, valuable content. Find different ways that you can get the message out there. Use social media. If you have a really small list, you could still email your list. Let them know, I'm going to be here on this date, on this time. Join me. So you need to do a little work up front to get people to actually show up. And it's okay if a lot of people don't show up because we actually have a bigger play than just who's on live. That's amazing. Awesome. So uh, the people that are on, do you do any kind of encouragement during the call to say, hey, like this, share this? Uh, or do you do that periodically throughout those Facebook Lives as you're getting started? Or do you make the assumption that the value and content is going to propel people to want to go ahead and share it? I think it's always a good idea to say, hey, if you're liking this and you've got other people that you know will like it as well, make sure you share it. I think actually calling it out is a good idea. But the bigger play in your Facebook Live is that I want you to use it to one, engage, but two, grow your email list. So if we're talking about the call to action, you know, what you want them to do while on live. I think in the beginning, it's a cool thing to say, I'd love for you to share it if, you find, if you're finding value once you kind of get going. But beyond that, I also think it's important that you get them to talk to you on a Facebook Live. So asking them questions, getting them to say yes or say no, that engagement, even if it's five people, I think is important so that you've got that two-way conversation going. That's awesome. Very cool. So you mentioned four topics, uh, getting people in, involved each step of the way. Uh, how are you then starting to, uh, to propel them towards the launch over those four weeks? Are you dropping hints that something is coming or are you just talking about the topics and then the idea of a, a bigger thing is mentioned more in that fourth or even after that fourth episode? Okay, so this is exactly how I do it. On each of the Facebook Lives, because I know the topics up front, I know what I'm showing up, I do some prep and I create just a really simple outline in a Google Doc of all the main points I want to make sure I cover around the topic that I promise. So if they're showing up to learn XYZ, I better deliver on XYZ and really stay focused. People have very little time, so you always want to come to the table prepared. And remember, you're showing up in a way that we want them to know, like, and trust you even more so that when you do sell, they already have this connection with you and they like you and they trust you. How you show up on these Facebook Lives is really, really important because they're deciding if they even want to keep following what you have to say. So when you're on a Facebook Live, I've got a quick little formula that I typically follow. And there's five steps. I have a few notes below. If you see me looking down, I'm cheating because I want to make sure I get it right. So the five steps is one, you start with a quick intro. Every single time you jump on Facebook Live, who you are, what you're about, but really, really quickly. Let's not go down some weird road where you keep talking about yourself over and over again. So right away, who you are, what you're about, boom. And then I want you to give the hook, what the topic's about and why it matters to them. So kind of build a little curiosity, tell them what they're going to learn, maybe give them a few little bullet points just to wet their whistle a little bit. 
From there, the third step is a story. So I want you to tell a story or give an example that you kind of bring them in and let them feel like they're really part of whatever it is you're, this experience you're creating on Facebook Live. A story about you, one of your students, something from the past, whatever you want it to be about, but it has to relate to what you're teaching. Once you tell a quick story, now you've got them, they're paying attention, and now you get into your teaching points. Whatever it is you promised, boom, boom, boom. Here's what I promised, here's what it is, here's an example, whatever it might be. Teach what they've shown up there for. From there, the call to action is a freebie. And this is where the magic of lead pages comes in because I never shy away from telling my students that I use lead pages for all of my opt-in pages. So with every Facebook Live I do in this kind of setting, in this campaign, I'll say, okay, if you like this and you want to put it to action, I've got this great freebie. And so one example, I, I use this one all the time because it was a really popular Facebook Live I did. It was all about how not to go down an entrepreneurial rabbit hole and how to get stuck in research or looking for the colors of your website or your logo, those things that we tend to get stuck in. So I created this freebie where it kept people on track. It was like a little planner for them. So I said, if you go to amyporterfield.com forward slash rabbit hole, it will take you to a page where you sign up. You can get my freebie right away. Once you sign up, I'll send it to you. And that is a lead page. And what I love about it is I got to customize it. So I uploaded my own image. I kept it really simple. And so I sent everybody to a lead page. They signed up. And then, of course, they got the freebie. Now they're in my email list. So once I deliver that freebie, I can start nurturing that relationship before I'm ready to launch. And so I do that for four weeks. Now to answer your question more specifically, I do tease that I have a program coming out. So I might say in a few weeks, I can't wait to show you what I've created. It's this or it's that, but I just drop hints. I really stay focused on what I promised them in that Facebook Live. And the whole goal is to get them to sign up for my freebie. I want to get them into my email list and show me that they have an interest in this topic since it directly relates back to what I am going to sell. So that basically is a nutshell how I do the Facebook Live. Of course, you know there's more to it with Facebook ads and, and driving traffic there, but that's initially the, the actual live session. Awesome. So as, uh, I'd love to know this as well. So you already have an idea of what your program is going to be. You've got your four topics that are leading up to it. How much do you change your program based on what you learn from the feedback uh, during those four Facebook Lives? Uh, or do you feel like everything's like pretty well set? So I don't use the feedback from these four Facebook Lives to change my program because at this point, the way I'm using this is my program is ready. Well, actually, I take it back. Usually, I do a pre-recorded online course. So I've already created the course and it's ready to sell, or at least it's almost ready to sell when I'm doing these four Facebook Lives. So it's pretty much figured out. I've already done my validation calls. I've validated the idea. I've had my beta test, perhaps, or whatever. So I've done all that work way up front. So at this stage, it's all about just getting people into the funnel. However, I've kind of recently changed my model in that I'm starting to sell a program that I'm going to deliver live. So you know how people will sell a program on a webinar and then deliver it over, let's say, six weeks after they sell it? Well, it's less work up front. So if you were doing it that way, which my very next program is going to be like that, any information you collect in these four weeks leading up, it's going to all be valuable for when you deliver that program live. So I'm glad you brought that up because, yes, this is a great insight that you can use down the road. Very cool. All right. So now that you have the four topics, you have the series, then you start talking about the program launch. Let's go to that secret sauce that you're starting to utilize, which is advertising. And a lot of people are doing advertising in a way that's costing them way too much money and they're not seeing a great ROI. And I think your method here is going to see a lot better results for people. So um, tell us, uh, tell us what you're doing. Okay, so once you get through the four weeks, and I'm not gonna pretend it was easy. When I did this for one of our promos, like showing up every week, new content, new freebies, it's a lot of work. But I did it with purpose and intention, knowing I was leading up to a launch. So once we got into the space of inviting people onto our webinars and opening up our cart, what we did is we actually retargeted all the video views from those four weeks of videos because when people watch your video facebook allows you to run an ad and retarget all the video views 
And we do a lot of Facebook advertising inside of my business. So we target a lot of different groups, different pages, different email lists I've got. So we do so many different opportunities in terms of targeting. And out of all of it, the group that performed the best in terms of targeting were the video views from these four videos leading up to my launch. And I think it makes sense because they were engaged, they were showing up because they liked the content, they had just watched it, they saw me live on video, so they had that connection with me. So not only was it more, uh, less expensive than some of the other targeting, it was the most valuable as well. That's extraordinary. And I, I do agree with you. I think people who are attending these sessions or watching the replays too, they count as part of that audience. They're familiar with you. And then you're, you're actually offering a program that's more of you. So this works extremely well, I think, because you're marketing your own expertise and yourself as the, the type of thing that they're going to be involved with in the program. So really like that idea a, a lot. Yes, definitely. And that reminds me, I'm so glad you brought that up because when you go live on a Facebook Live, putting text above the video, telling people what the topic is and a little bit about what they'll learn is important. So when you're live, they can kind of read and decide if they want to listen. And then after you're live, it instantly goes into a recording on your Facebook page. I think it's valuable to kind of change, edit the text above and include a link to your freebie, include a link to your lead page of whatever freebie that you included on that session. That way, when it is a recording, you're getting more video views, like you said, so you're gonna include those in your targeting, more video views, but also you can get more opt-ins, especially if you have that link right above the video. So don't be shy to edit the text after it is a recording. That's great. And are you boosting your videos afterwards as well? Uh, with some type of advertising along the way? Yeah, I've done that as well. And that's a great idea. And that's an easy way to advertise. So once that video becomes a recording, you can boost it and you can show it to more people that are fans of your Facebook page. That keeps the cost down usually, or beyond that, you can target beyond that. But here's the great thing. A lot of people find uh, wear a badge of honor that they just jump on Facebook Live, they're going off the cuff, it's going to be good, whatever. And I cringe usually when I hear that because time is money and people are busy. And so if you are the one who shows up prepared, you deliver impeccable content, you deliver on your promise, and you've got this great freebie that you're going to offer, if you do that four weeks in a row, you're going to stand out from the competition and you're not going to waste anybody's time. So it makes sense for you to boost that video, it makes sense for you to retarget that traffic because you've done a really good job of delivering great content. So all around, I feel like it's a win-win. That's awesome. So this is a really great campaign. I really appreciate you breaking it down for us. Uh, before we wrap up, is there anything that you're testing out that you don't have proof of yet, but that you're experimenting with in the next launch that you're going to do that you'd love to share uh, that we can keep tabs of uh, later on through the launch? I love that question. So we're going to do more Facebook ads and with video. So more video ads. I've done video ads in the past, but what I've done is on a video ad, I'll say, Hey, I've got this webinar coming up. Here's what you'll learn. Boom, boom, boom. Click the link, sign up. So that's been my extent of video ads. But what we've decided is we're going to teach a little bit more in the video ad. And from there, the call to action can still be sign up for my webinar, but I'm going to give more value in those video ads and use them as a little teaching. And I've never done that before. So we'll see how it goes. And if it goes really well, maybe you can have me back so I can talk about the results. <laughs> Absolutely. And even if it doesn't go well, we'd love to have you back to Good explain point. Any, yes. any type of uh, learning that you get. I can't wait like to this. come on your show and talk about all my big mistakes. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, Amy, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and I can't wait to, to hear the results of your launch. Uh, and I'm excited to, that you were able to join us here as our first expert on the fourth version of Conversion Cast since you were one of our first uh, also on the original with Tim Page. So thanks again for being here. Thank you so much. I love everything you guys do. I'm so glad to be a partner with you. So take care. Thanks so much to Amy and Bob for having uh, a really great conversation today. I think Amy uh, Amy's obviously an expert and uh, just super great to listen to. Her website is jam-packed with, uh, she's got free cheat sheets, she's got 
uh, courses there, um, the tools that she uses in her own digital marketing. Uh, so make sure you check out amyporterfield.com to go get all of those things, take advantage of her expertise. Uh, if, if it wasn't already clear to you how valuable it is, it definitely will be once you go there. She's also got a great podcast you can listen to if you hit up her website as well. So amyporterfield.com. Uh, once more, a big thanks to Bob and Amy for uh, their conversation and for all their wisdom. And uh, that's going to do it for this week on Conversion Cast. As always, we'll see you next week. This episode of Conversion Cast is brought to you by Converted, the nation's premier marketing conference from the team at Lead Pages and Drip. Join us for two days of networking, fun, and education, where you'll learn proven conversion marketing campaigns from 15 of the best marketing minds in the business. Speakers include Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income, Joanna Weeb from Copy Hackers, Lead Pages' very own Clay Collins, podcaster and filmmaker Kevin Smith, and many more. And starting now, use the offer code SAVE200 at checkout to take a full $200 off any ticket you purchase. We hope you'll join us at Converted, October 17th and 18th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Get your tickets today at Converted.com.